Hello and welcome to Hoops Weekly Rewind, a show that will recap the last week in the NBA. This episode, we'll begin by talking about teams that are hot and those that are not. Next, I'll discuss some of the best games from last week and then some notable player performances. I'll be handing out several different player awards of last week, talking about some miscellaneous NBA news, and then finishing off with some of my favorite games going into next week. Let's talk about the hot teams in the NBA. First up, the Cleveland Cavaliers are the hottest team in the NBA right now. They finished the week 5-0, and they're 14-1 in their last 15 games. They had three road wins against some of the worst teams in the NBA, and then they took care of business at home against the Kings and the Pistons. The Los Angeles Lakers had a great week. They had two impressive road wins, one when they were short-handed in Boston. They played without LeBron and Anthony Davis and were able to pull out a win, and they also won in New York against the short-handed New York Knicks. They finished the week 3-0. One of the most fun teams as of late, the New Orleans Pelicans, went 4-0. They had three road wins, beating the Rockets, the Spurs, and the Clippers, and they took care of business against the Raptors at home. Lastly, the Los Angeles Clippers just keep on winning. They finished 4-1, with their only loss being to the New Orleans Pelicans. That team just keeps looking scarier and scarier. Now, on to the teams that aren't doing so well. The Milwaukee Bucks went 1-3, and, and that makes their record under Doc Rivers 1-4. We'll see how it plays out, but it's not a great start to his tenure. They had a tough Western Conference road trip, so we'll see if they can maybe get back on track at home. Another top seed in the East... The Philadelphia 76ers also went 1-3. Philadelphia started the week beating the Jazz in Utah behind Tyrese Maxey's huge night, which I'll discuss in a second. But since then, they've lost three straight home games and they've fallen all the way down to the fifth seed without Joel Embiid. Now lastly, the worst got even worse this week. The Charlotte Hornets, Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, Portland Trailblazers, San Antonio Spurs, and Memphis Grizzlies win a combined 2-21 2-21 and 21 last week. These six teams are the bottom in the entire league, and this week just widened that gap. Now, for some games of last week. When the Bucks took on the Dallas Mavericks in Dallas, Giannis Antetokounmpo had an efficient 48 points, 6 rebounds, and 10 assists in their 129-117 win. Luka had a crazy stat line of 40 points, 9 rebounds, 11 assists, but he also had 9 turnovers, so kind of balanced out. The last game I want to talk about is the Los Angeles Clippers taking on the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta. The final score was 149 to 144 in the Clippers' favor. The teams finished with 41 combined three-pointers and Harden's near 30-point triple-double with Kawhi Leonard's 36 points were enough to overtake the Hawks. DeAndre Hunter on the Atlanta Hawks had a great game though, scoring 27 points in only 18 minutes. Moving on to the next section of notable player performances of last week. First up is a game that I mentioned earlier when Tyrese Maxey dropped 51 points on 63% from the field in a win against the Jazz in Utah. Over the weekend, Stephen Curry dropped 60 points on 58% in a loss to the Atlanta Hawks. That's been the story of the Warriors' season so far. Even when Steph Curry has played well, they just haven't been able to help him enough. Lastly, Brandon Ingram had 41 points, 6 rebounds, and 9 assists on 16 for 21 from the field in the Pelicans' win against the Raptors. Amazing efficiency, and he's just been playing insanely well recently with the Pelicans' success. Now, moving on to my favorite part of the video, the player awards. The first award I'll be giving out this week is the Rookie of the Week, and the winner is Brandon Miller. He finished the week averaging 27 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and a block on 48, 41, 88% splits. Even though they're not currently winning, He looks amazing, and he looks every single bit of the number two draft pick of 2023. This next one's a tough one, but the bum of the week goes to Jordan Poole. The Washington Wizards went 0-3, and Jordan Poole averaged 7 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists. (coughs) His shooting splits were the worst part of it, though. He shot 21% from the field and 9% from three on the week. Next up, the breakout player of the week. To big NBA fans and Bulls fans, this guy broke out a long time ago, but he had such a great week that I just had to bring him up again. Kobe White helped lead the Bulls to a 2-1 record. He averaged 31 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists in those 3 games. On incredible 54-50-81 splits. Amazing week, and I'm happy that the Bulls have something to be excited about. Each week, I'll have some different awards to hand out, but Player of the Week will be consistent throughout all of them. 
For this week's Western Conference Player of the Week, I chose Brandon Ingram. As I mentioned earlier, the New Orleans Pelicans went 4-0, and Brandon Ingram was a huge part of this. He averaged 25 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, on amazing efficiency as well. I'm telling you guys, you guys should watch the Pelicans whenever you can. They have some really fun stars, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, CJ McCollum, and they have some amazing role players alongside that just fit this team perfectly. Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, Jonas Valanciunas, etc. The Pelicans are a super fun team, and Brandon Ingram was the Western Conference Player of the Week. Now, for the Eastern Conference Player of the Week, I give it to Donovan Mitchell. The Cavaliers went 5-0, and and Donovan Mitchell averaged 34 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists throughout those 5 games. His efficiency was, once again, also phenomenal, at 56% from the field, 44% from 3, 90% from the line. Congrats to all of the award winners, and now we'll be moving on just to some miscellaneous NBA news. The NBA trade deadline just happened this afternoon, and I'll discuss some trades that I think could have some potential playoff implications. The Phoenix Suns got Royce O'Neal and David Roddy in a three-team trade with the Nets and the Grizzlies. In this trade, they gave up a bunch of their deep bench depth. Uh, Keita bates Dia, Jordan Goodwin, Yuta Watanabe, and Chemezi Metu, along with three second-round picks. So a lot is going out, but nothing that is extremely valuable to them. And Royce O'Neal will be a sure playoff rotation guy, and David Roddy could work his way into that as well. In my eyes, the Dallas Mavericks were one of the winners in the trade deadline as well. They ended up getting P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford today in two separate deals. And they gave up Seth Curry, Grant Williams, who just hasn't meshed with the team as well as they would have liked, Rashawn Holmes, and a bunch of second round picks. Milwaukee somewhat got their hope for some more perimeter defense when they traded for Patrick Beverly from the 76ers, and they only gave up Cameron Payne in a second round pick. I don't know if it's enough defense, but it does make their perimeter defense better. Oklahoma City was finally buyers at the deadline when they traded for Gordon Hayward, giving up some guys Trey Mann and second round picks. Philadelphia was a part of another trade when they acquired Buddy Heald from the Indiana Pacers. They gave up Furkan Korkmaz, which is a very long tenured 76er player, some second round picks, and Marcus Morris. The Celtics got a few guys. They got Jaden Hardy from the 76ers, Xavier Tillman from the Grizzlies. The Minnesota Timberwolves acquired Monte Morris from the Detroit Pistons. He's a great backup point guard, great assist to turnover ratio, solid shooter in the past, not the best defender, but he's great insurance behind Mike Conley. In my opinion, the biggest winners of the 2024 NBA trade deadline was the New York Knicks. They acquired Bojan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks, and they didn't give up anything meaningful in their rotation except for Quinton Grimes. The New York Knicks look like potentially the second best team in the East. They are a very legit threat. Now, for the last segment of this episode is games that I'm looking forward to for next week. I have three main games, and then I'll list a bunch at the end because there's a lot of good games this upcoming week. The Indiana Pacers take on the New York Knicks in Madison Square Garden, on Saturday, this February 10th. This is a super fun game. It's two of the more enjoyable teams in the East to watch, the Knicks and the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton should hopefully be back, maybe not on a minutes restriction. Keep an eye out for this game. The second game is the Denver Nuggets at the Milwaukee Bucks on Monday, February 12th. By this time, Doc Rivers has had some time to gel with his team. They're gonna be past the trade deadline, so it'll be really interesting to see how they match up in Milwaukee against the reigning champs. The last game is also on Monday, February 12th, and it's the Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the LA Clippers in Los Angeles. These are two of the top four seeds in the Western Conference, and top four seed means you're right there for the first seed. So this could swing everything, and this is a really good measuring stick game for both teams. Definitely, you have to try to watch this game. Now I'm just going to list some of the great games coming this week quickly. The Timberwolves playing in Milwaukee tonight. Nuggets at Lakers for Kobe Statue Night is tonight. The Suns at Warriors on Saturday night. Celtics in Miami on Sunday. And the Sacramento Kings in Phoenix on Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoops Weekly Rewind. And I'll be back next Thursday for another recap.